pair shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. We will pray the psalm by half verse, dividing at the asterisk. Give the king your justice, O God. And your righteousness to the king's son. That he may rule your people righteously. And that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people. And the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure. From one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Paul prays that God's steadfastness and encouragement will lead to harmony of his people. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with the Christ Jesus, so that together you may, may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he may, he might, confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing <laughs> fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Every year on the first Sunday of Advent, the scriptures focus our attention on Christ's second coming and how we need to be aware of that and how we need to be prepared because we don't know the day nor the hour when the Lord will return. The rest of the Sundays of Advent turn us to think back to the beginning when Jesus originally came among us, one like us and everything except for sin, and how we need to be prepared to properly welcome Christ when we get to his birthday. But another part of that preparation is reminding ourselves, being reminded that in the here and now, the Lord also comes to us. He came in the past, he will come in the future, but he comes to us in the here and the now. And by this invitation to repentance and to look at our lives and to uh, see what needs to change and what we need to do in order to be more Christ-like is where we find ourselves in this moment. And I'd like to share, first of all, this uh, reflection with you from a woman by the name of Karen Hansen from something she wrote, Prepare the Way, that uh, appeared last year, November 
of 2021 in bearings online. <clears throat> in Advent, Christians are encouraged to prepare themselves for Jesus' birth by clearing a pathway in their hearts through repentance. But in the prophet Isaiah's time, it was God who made a path in the desert for the captives to return home to Jerusalem. Christians think too small in Advent. It's not primarily individual work that needs doing, although that's part of it. It is not a time of exclusively private reflection. The coming of the Lord is always happening and requires lots of heavy lifting. As forgiven and free people of God in Christ, Christians are called to do the work of removing obstacles that keep people from the full, liberating deliverance of God. They are to level the hills and fill in the valleys so that everyone is on an equal footing. They are to remove any system, stumbling stone, or barrier that hinders the return. This is what it means to prepare the way of the Lord. In that reading from the prophet Isaiah that we have for today, we hear how the Lord is presenting through the prophet this vision of how the world was meant to be and how he wants it to become that way. That was God's original intention for the world. And because of the sin of our first parents, of Adam and Eve, however we choose to describe that sin of theirs, things have not been the same since. They have never really been fully what God wanted them to be. And so this perennial call in Advent to us continues to echo what God said through the prophets and what God spoke through the historical books of the Old Testament, of what his vision for the world was meant to be, what God wanted it to be, and how you and I who are alive today in this time, in this place, have our part of that work to do to make this the world that God wants it to be. However, we know that there are plenty of obstacles to that. And sin basically describes that. And that's why I'd like to share this next reflection with you. Because John the Baptist makes it very clear to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and anybody else who thought of themselves as being among the righteous ones, because the name Pharisee in and of itself meant those set apart. So this confrontation with John the Baptist, when he said to them, you brood of vipers, in other words, you bunch of snakes, how can you come out here unless you really are serious about letting go of the sin in your life, particularly your pride? It makes you think that you are different and better than everybody else. So this is taken from Debbie Thomas, the voice of one crying, called from uh, an article called Journey with Jesus from December 8th, 2019. She says, <clears throat> for us 21st century Christians, sin and repentance are loaded words we try to avoid. Many of us, particularly those of us who grew up in fundamentalist circles, dislike the word sin. We associate it with shame, guilt, and condemnation. Many of us also distrust the word because we've seen how easily it can be manipulated to justify one moralistic agenda over another. And yet Advent begins with an honest, wilderness-style reckoning with sin. We can't get to the manger unless we go through John the Baptist. And John is all about repentance. 
What is sin, really? Growing up, I was taught that sin is breaking God's laws or missing the mark as an archer misses his target or committing immoral acts. These definitions aren't wrong, but they're incomplete. They don't go far enough. They don't name the fullness of what we struggle with. Sin, at its heart, is a refusal to become fully human. It's anything that interferes with the opening up of our whole hearts to God, to others, to creation, and to ourselves. Sin is estrangement, disconnection, sterility, disharmony. It's the sludge that slows us down, that says, quit, stop trying, give up, change is impossible. Sin is apathy, carelessness, a frightened resistance to an engaged life. Sin is the opposite of creativity, the opposite of abundance, the opposite of flourishing. Sin is a walking death. And it is easier to spot, name, and confess a walking death in the wilderness than it is anywhere else. Are you squirming yet? How is this good news, this portrait of a Jesus who judges, sorts, and burns us? I wonder if we squirm because we misconstrue the meaning of judgment. I tend to equate judgment with condemnation, but in fact, to judge something is to see it clearly, to know it as it truly is. In my dictionary, synonyms for judgment include discernment, acuity, sharpness, and perception. What if John is saying that the Messiah who is coming really sees us? that he knows us at our very core. Maybe the winnowing fork is an instrument of deep love, patiently wielded by the one who discerns in us rich harvests, still hidden by chaff. <clears throat> one of the most important things about our preparation for Christmas is remembering that God took on our human nature and everything except for sin so that what we had lost would be able to restore, be restored to us. In other words, by Christ becoming one of us in everything except for sin, and making it possible for us through his life, death, and resurrection, and our entry into that mystery through our baptism, we are called to the kind of life that Christ embodies. We're called to be living icons of Jesus Christ. And an icon is that religious representation that invites us to see it not as an end in itself, but as a window into another dimension. Through that saint or through the icon of Christ, we see what it is that God ultimately calls us to, who the Lord really is, and what it is that we share in already, and what we are to grow into. When John invited the Pharisees and the Sadducees and any of the others, other leaders who were there to an honest to God repentance, it was because he knew that it was too easy for them to say, yes, we'll be baptized. Yes, we've made our effort now to show that John the Baptist isn't our enemy. But that wasn't good enough because that was not why John was there. They were to really show that they wanted to change their lives. They had to really show that they weren't interested in just putting on a show for others, that they sincerely wanted to follow 
Yahweh, that they wanted to really live out the precepts of the law, the 631 precepts that they, the Pharisees in particular, had distilled from the law of Moses that every faithful Jewish man was supposed to fulfill, that they were serious about, not that they were just going through the motions. Because what Jesus came to do was to make us fully alive, fully human. And being fully human means that everything about us can be moved the same way it moved our Lord. That the compassion of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the mercy, the forgiveness, the understanding of Jesus, all of those things that Jesus demonstrates in the gospel are the things that we are called to live as well. You know, lately, I have been overwhelmed by phone calls from people who need help. They need a place to stay. They need food. They need something that, you know, that they can't seem to find anywhere else. And I've been only too willing because of resources available to give them this kind of financial help. But at the same time, I'm asking myself, what is this doing ultimately? It's just putting a Band-Aid on the situation. It's not really changing anything. For the moment, they're warm, they have food, but in a couple of days' time, they'll be back at it again, and they'll probably be calling me again or they'll be going to somebody else. And what I see is what I have experienced in the past, that indeed, when there's an acute need, there is something that needs to be done to help somebody. But the ultimate is what can be done or what needs to be done so that this situation that people find themselves in can be done away with, or at least changed enough that people can have their dignity restored to them, or maybe learn about their dignity for the first time. Because a number of these people have never felt like their life was very much worth anything to start with from the get-go. So it means to be fully human. What it means to be fully human is to experience oneself as worthwhile, as being loved, of being cared about, of being ministered to, of experiencing compassion, understanding, forgiveness, support. And so often because we get caught up in our own things. We get caught up in, in, you know, what's the right thing for us to do? Or at this time of the year, because we have all kinds of expectations that we create for ourselves or that others have laid on us. We spend so much time doing our work, but then we have to, you know, shop. We have to do this. We have to get ready for this Christmas event and that Christmas event and this and that and the other thing. And we never give ourselves a break. We never take a moment to really think that the reason that Jesus took on our humanity in the first place was to restore our human nature, to give us back our dignity, to remind us that from the beginning, when God created Adam and Eve, that God's intention was that they, from that moment on, that we human beings would partake of the divine nature. And when that was withdrawn, it was promised that it would be given back. And Christ is the one who has restored it to us 
and that we enter into it by virtue of our baptism. And so if we take the call to repentance seriously, if we look at what we're doing with our lives right in the here and now, of how we're responding to need, whatever that need is, whether it's need of our time with our kids or with our spouses or with other people or other demands or requests from the community around us for some kind of assistance, even if it's just our presence at something. This is the opportunity that the Lord is giving us to experience a little more deeply at a little deeper level what it is to know that we are becoming more truly human because ultimately that's why Jesus came to restore humanity to what the Father wanted it to be from the beginning. So consider what John the Baptist is saying as an invitation to look seriously at how we're living and how we react to things and ask for the grace to let go of those things that make us less human or that force us some way or other to look at others and to class them as less human because they look differently, they act differently, they believe differently, or what have you. Which doesn't mean that anything goes that we don't have to, have, that we're not entitled to an opinion. But as our human dignity is restored to us, as we discover it more, as the Lord is able to, by his power and his love, to strip away those things that we bury ourselves under, or as it said in that reflection, see the goodness under all the chaff, the real wheat under all the chaff. That's what, that's the gift that the Lord wants you and me to experience during this Advent. So that at Christmas, when we celebrate for sure the coming of Christ in the past and are reminded about his coming in the future, that we never forget that he comes to us now that he is here in our midst now through people who are in need and also in one another who are gathered here today. And also he comes to us through this holy word and in most especially in the gift of himself in holy communion so that we can remember that we are his and that he is ours and that we are to continue to grow into that likeness of Christ so that the world around us can look through us and see the Jesus who is in our midst. Not just thinking about a past, a once upon a time, or a future that is indeterminate, but to know that in the present, the Lord is with us. Now I invite you to stand as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. <clears throat> we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, you renew the church in every age. We give thanks for hymn writers and theologians, especially St. John of Damascus, whom we commemorate today. And for our leaders, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Paula, our bishop, and Mike, our rector. The Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East, their primate, bishop, clergy, and faithful. The organizations of the Chicago Diocese, Episcopal Charities and Community Services, Bishop Anderson House, Cathedral Counseling Center, Revive Center, Lawrence Hall, the Church Home at Montgomery Place, Primo Center for Women and Children, and for our companion diocese of Southeast Mexico and ranked South Sudan. Inspire teachers, writers, musicians, and all leaders to delight in and instruct your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> you give us a vision of creation and harmony when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companions to its creatures. Restore to balance and wholeness what human greed has harmed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. You defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders, especially Joseph, our president, and all federal, state, and local officials who will govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges and lawmakers to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> you deliver those in need from sickness, suffering, and fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, victims of human trafficking, those listed in today's bulletin, all those in our intention books, and on the intercessory prayer list. Provide safety and help to our neighbors without shelter, refugees, and those fleeing violence, and those we wish to mention now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You urge your people to welcome one another as you have welcomed us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in this and every congregation. We pray for people who are homebound, hospitalized, or separated from loved ones. Especially Tom and Bill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You guide and comfort us in times of trial and celebration. Bless Denver Hannigan, Stephen Stegging, and Brenda Schroeder who are celebrating birthdays. Are there others? And to those celebrating their anniversaries, are there any? Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> you embrace all who have died, trusting in your promises, especially Tina Stoltz, Stephen Vaughn, and those we wish to remember now. We give thanks for their faithful witness. Sustain us in hope until we are united with them in the joy of your eternal presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us now join together in the prayer for the mission of our parish found inside the front cover of the bulletin. Loving God, through your grace, guide us, the people of Calvary Episcopal Church, to joyfully carry out our mission of growing faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may develop a living faith that deepens our understanding of you and strengthens our awareness of the needs of others. May we be a transforming light within our parish and within the community. All this we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you, Michelle. First of all, I want to welcome our visitors who are with us here today. And uh, <clears throat> just to remind you that uh, I'll give a little special instruction at communion time, but in the Episcopal Church, all baptized Christians are welcome to receive Holy Communion. Uh, we will give communion again today on the floor level, and you'll have the option of receiving either the host or the little communion cup. And also, if you receive the host, you'll be welcome to receive also from the chalice. Um, as I suggested, if you want to receive the host, just come up like you would at the rail with one hand crossed over the other. If you want to just receive the little communion cup, just give me one hand like this. You don't have to do this anymore. Just do this. And then that should take care of it. And if you don't want to receive communion, but you want a blessing, just do this. So, uh, <clears throat> For anybody that's uh, having a difficult time with the loss of loved ones, this coming Tuesday evening from 6.30 to 8 here at Calvary, uh, Fox Valley Hands of Hope, from formerly Fox Valley Volunteer Hospice, is conducting a seminar called Hope for the Holidays. So that's available. If you need more information, that information is in the bulletin. And uh, we encourage you, if you haven't already done so, <clears throat> excuse me, if you haven't already done so, to please uh, prayerfully consider your pledge to Calvary for 2023. And uh, there is a pledge form in the bulletin, as well as uh, you can do it online, or you can pick up a card outside the office and bring that back, put it in the collection, mail it in, whatever your desire is, but so that we could have those back by December the 20th, so that our finance council can know what it is that we will have to work with in the year to come as they finalize the budget for the annual meeting. Also, um, next Sunday, the 11th, at 4.30 p.m. at 
the Peg Bond Pavilion down by City Hall. There will be a celebration of Songs and Lights. Uh, the Songs and Lights celebration is basically akin to uh, Lessons in Carols, but a much more abbreviated fashion. And uh, it will be an opportunity to gather together with other Christians from other churches here in Batavia <laughs> who will be there as well sharing in song and in reflection, and there will be luminaria and opportunities for your own personal prayer intentions, as well as then there will be hot chocolate, there'll be popcorn, there may be other surprises there, um, but everyone is encouraged and welcome to be there. Uh, and if you have friends or neighbors that uh, don't have a church of their own, or who, but who might like to do something like that, um, please just mention it. You have grandchildren, children, what have you. Everybody is invited to that. Next Sunday, the 11th at 4.30, and we're hoping that starting at 4.30, before the sun goes down, absolutely, that it won't be quite as cold as it might be. And also we're praying for no wind if possible, because you know how windy it can get down there. Um, also, remind our visitors that today, following the church service, we have two things going on. One is the uh, cookie exchange that uh, some people have signed up for, and, you're, and they'll be in the... Uh, in the rector's hall down all the way down the long hallway. But for those who are participating in the cookie exchange, there are also lots of uh, goodies in the parish kitchen. Uh, so you're welcome to come back and share also in that if you're not going to be part of the cookie exchange today. Joel. <clears throat> Thanksgiving, we had several people come and share Thanksgiving dinner with us. And the people from the congregation really did a great job of uh, you know, cooking and preparing the food that we shared. We even had enough love for to pick some of the Lazarus out. So we're doing it again on Christmas Day. So there is a sign up outside the kitchen. There will also be one online. And as Father Mike reminded me today, because some people are still hesitant about eating in public, people can come and pick up a dinner and take it home if they want to do that. So if you're interested in helping in any way or in coming to eat or to help serve or anything else, please sign up either right here while you're here today or online. Thank you. Any other announcements? Yes, Michelle. Wait a minute. I can't hear you. Christmas Day. P I M E noon. Noon. Noon on Christmas Day. The service, the service is 10 30. The dinner, and it is a Sunday too. And the service. The service is actually 8 and 10.15, but the later is 10.15. The meal is at noon. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? So please join together with me in page 20 of the offertory prayer. Lord, accept our praises. Have compassion on our human frailty. <laughs> And since we have nothing of ourselves to offer, let your mercy make us acceptable in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. You led your people to Christ by the preaching of John the Baptist, his friend and forerunner. In the desert, John prepared his way and announced the presence of your son, promising his righteous judgments and his gifts of truth and grace. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, seated. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father. In Jesus, you showed us yourself. Our hope is built on him, the first, the last, the living one. Obedient even to accepting death, he opened the gates of glory and calls us now to share the life of heaven. Before he was given up to suffering and death, a light with the vision of a feast that heralded a kingdom yet to come. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. <clears throat> After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for many that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. You can take in your white tennis shoes this time. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, we now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension. And we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts and with them ourselves a single holy living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine that overshadowed by your Spirit's life-giving power 
they may be the body and blood of your son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last, in your new creation, we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, St. John of Damascus, and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> and now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy Blessed Jesus, with the Christian faithful across the world, gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and action to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom. Who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Again, for those who may not be familiar, these are the little communion cups. And just as a reminder to all who are familiar, the blood of Christ is in this top, the body of Christ in the bottom. So as you approach, if you wish to receive one of these, extend one hand 
I will say the body and blood of Christ to you. You can respond, Amen, and I'll place it in your palm. If you're on this side, go over that way. If you're on this side, go that way. Turn it over, peel back the bottom, receive the body of Christ. Turn it back over, peel back the top, receive the blood of Christ. Put the empty containers in the baskets that are lined with aluminum foil that you find at each end of the front modesty bar. <clears throat>
Okay. okay, I'm checking them out. Bad off I am. <clears throat> the prayer after Holy Communion. Let us pray. Filled with the food and drink which nourishes the spirit, we pray to you, Lord. Grant us wisdom to live in this passing age and inspire us with longing for the age to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await, make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Thank you. 
Let us bless the Lord.